Hey America, and welcome to another video on software design. Today we're going to be talking about domain modeling. And in our last video, which you can see up here, uh, we talked a little bit about onion architecture. And at the very core of onion architecture is the concept of a domain model. We touched on that a little bit, but today we're going to get more in depth on what a domain model is and how you want to approach it. So your domain model is basically a way of representing the concepts that your application work with in code. So I think of a domain model as being very similar to a map. Like how your domain model is a representation of either the concepts that your application is working with in code, a map is a representation of the real world put on paper. So here is the most theoretically correct map you could have of an area. But this map doesn't really give you any particular value. It doesn't help you solve any problems. So if I was trying to go from point A to point B on this map, I wouldn't have a lot of really usable information to go off of. So let's say that this is a problem space we're working out with in our application. We're going to create some software for getting from point A to point B. For the purpose of that software, this is a really good representation. We can see here we have roads. Each road is connected in an intersection, and a route is going to start with a start point, an end point, and a number of different uh, turns along the way. But let's say we have a completely different problem space. Maybe we're trying to figure out for a city where a particular pollutant is coming from, that's ending up in their waterways. For this, we're going to need a different map that represents the same area, but in a completely different way. Instead of looking at highways and roads, it's looking at watersheds, streams, and bodies of water. Just like having a street map wouldn't be very useful for tracking down our pollution, having a waterway map won't help you very much for getting from point A to point B. And this is the key to domain modeling, is understanding the same concept will appear very, very differently depending on how you look at it and depending on what problem you're trying to solve. One of the biggest problems you can run into with domain modeling is trying to have one master model of a particular concept that will be valid and apply throughout your entire organization. So this can happen in any system, but it's especially common for monolithic code bases where you might have the same code base that's used for lots of different problems. It's easy to look in your code base and see one bit of code that's representing a particular concept and decide to tack on a little bit of added functionality down there but quickly what you're going to find is the equivalent of if we tried to do this for our maps. So this map has all of the layers and all of the data points turned on on it, and it becomes a very bad map for almost any purpose you can imagine. Uh, it shows land cover, it shows elevation, it shows waterways, it shows roads, uh, but it doesn't show any of those very well, and it makes a lot of compromises for each of those purposes. This also has a lot of additional added complexity. So if you were thinking about the equivalent code that you were going to write, it would be an incredibly complex piece of code, and it would be incredibly difficult to maintain. So domain modeling is all about breaking down problems into smaller problems and then figuring out a representation of the concepts that your code is going to work with and modeling them in the simplest way that you possibly can for that particular purpose. So the obvious problem this raises is that eventually your system is going to have to interact with other systems outside of it. And if each system has a different domain model well suited to its individual needs, this is obviously going to raise some problems. So to solve this problem, we can look at our maps example. Even though they all have a very different model of the world, and they represent the area very differently, they do have a few common data points. In our case, we can look at and see that they all share the concept of a coordinate, and those coordinates are the same between them. So that means we can map in between our concept of a particular point and their point. So as long as there's a few common data points between your different models, you can pretty easily map from one to another, and that way, each of your systems can have their own independent domain model. Each of them can think about the world in a simplified way that's matched well to its particular problem that's trying to solve, but they can still interact with each other. So this is a pretty big topic, so we'll just touch on it for now, but this is essentially the core idea behind something called domain-driven design. Domain-driven design, at its core, has the concept that you're going to look at the problems that your organization solves, and you're going to break those up into bounded contexts. Those bounded contexts are the idea that you can take the problem space that the entire company is working on and break them up into smaller ones. And each of those small contexts can have its own domain model, its own language, and its own way of thinking about its problems. And within that particular problem space, you can come up with a common language for talking about the problem. So then in between each of those bounded contexts, you can put a pretty hard boundary and translate from your concept of a particular problem to somebody else's concept. This is called context mapping. So we'll talk about domain-driven design more in future videos, but for the time being, the key takeaway is that for domain modeling, you want to look at the specific problem that your application is going to solve, 
and then figure out a way of representing your problem space in code, much like a map does, that's specifically targeted towards how you're going to look at it, how you're going to solve it, and then aggressively simplify it so it doesn't include anything that you don't need for it. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Feel free to put a comment on the video. I'll try to get back to them. And until next time, have a good day.